<laughs> Got it. Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'm working on this MTD riding mower. This is one of many pieces of equipment that Stanley has given to the channel. Now this, don't know a lot about it other than it's at least 30 years old. You know, it started its life down in Nebraska and was put to work for about 10 years. And then it made its way up north and it's been sitting in a garage for at least 20 years. So, you know, will it run again? I think so, but it's gonna need a bit of work. The tires, they were all off their bead. I put them on last night and this morning, three of the four tires are flat again. So that is gonna have to be dealt with. You know, the choke lever I noticed was bent and it seems to be seized. You know, of course the battery, I'm sure, has to be replaced after 20 years. Uh, the tank, thankfully, it is dry and clean. So maybe the carburetor's in good shape. At least that's my hope. And the engine, it's not stuck, but I wouldn't say it's free. It needs a lot of force to get that to move. And let's see, we actually got a code here. 950907, I believe that says. So this is 27 years old. So before I do anything, I'm going to power wash this. So I'm going to try to get this side panel off. I think it's just held in place by a few bolts. Once that's off, it'll give better access to kind of clean that dirt and dust out of there. Let me get you set up a little bit better and get going on this. Gonna get this old battery out of the way so I can spray some super clean degreaser underneath. And it looks like the hold down also broke 
for the battery. So we'll have to come up with something for that, but won't worry about that now. Let's get the plug out. Gonna get a little WD-40 in the top end to help loosen things up. I wonder if it's the belt that's stuck on the pulley. I think we're good. I don't think the engine was stuck. The belt, I think, is the issue. Or actually, maybe the pulley. There is some rust on the pulley. And I think that's what the drag was initially and what the noise is now. So let me find a battery. We'll turn it over, see if we have spark. Riding mower cleaned up pretty well. Really the only place where there's appreciable rust is right kind of where that old battery was sitting. Anyway, I don't have the right size battery, so I'm going to test with this one. Uh, the one I pulled out of there was more of a motorcycle or an ATV size battery, but let's uh, just clean the terminals up a bit. We'll attach it and turn it over, see if we have spark.
Nice. The engine, it turned over well. I could hear compression coming out of the spark plug hole. So let's check the oil real quick, go around to the other side and see if we have spark. Plenty of oil, maybe a touch over full, but the oil looks nice and clean. And I don't smell any fuel. So the oil, I think we're good. We got spark. So I'm gonna clean the plug up, we'll put it back in, and maybe try putting a little fuel in that carburetor, see what it does. Yeah, I'm gonna skip putting any fuel in this carburetor. The throttle plate is stuck. I can't move the governor arm. So most likely that is stuck in wide open throttle. So instead I'll just pull the air box, give it a little squirt of starting fluid and see if it comes to life. That sounded really good, considering it's been 20 years since this engine has fired up. So let's get this inside, get the carburetor off and see if it can't be cleaned up. I'm hoping the leak is just between the tire and the rim. These were all off the bead and I think there's a lot of dirt and dust here that potentially if I just clean it a bit, it might hold air. Yeah, it didn't take long. I'd say about five minutes after pushing this in the garage, both 
tires in the front were flat and off the rim again. So I just spent some time reviewing this one. I sprayed a bunch of soapy water on it. And you could see that it was leaking right here. There was some rust and crust on the rim. So I cleaned that up, got it to reseat, and I think we're good. This one doesn't seem to be leaking anymore. Uh, the rear right, not so lucky. It's not leaking on the bead, but it's actually the valve stem itself that's leaking. So that has to be replaced. As far as the front left, haven't taken a close look at that yet. So let's take a peek at that now and see if we can't get that one sorted out. Yeah, right there. And a massive leak on the back side. So let's take the air out of the tires. We'll just clean up the rims, see if we can't make it any better. The rim doesn't feel too bad. There was just a lot of chipping paint, which I think was preventing it from seating. Things are looking pretty good. I don't see a leak along the bead on either side of this tire anymore. There might be a little something by the valve stem, uh, but not much. It's a million times better than what it was. So at this point, I'd say both tires should be good to go.
got to remove the studs to get this carburetor off. I'm not so sure about this one. Throttle plate is stuck. The choke plate is not stuck, but it doesn't close all the way. And there is a lot of debris on top of this carburetor. So I think I'm gonna leave the needle and the pilot jet in for now. Just drop the bowl, get this whole thing and the ultrasonic to get kind of everything off that I can uh, before pulling these jets. Those passages are pretty small and I really don't wanna get any of this dirt inside of there if I can help it. Okay, that's actually not too bad. I think I think this is varnish, in which case it'll clean off. Uh, rust, on the other hand, does not clean up in the ultrasonic, but that I think will come right out. And the float looks pretty good. Needle is stuck though. Let me try a little PB blaster in there, see if it'll free that needle up. Nice. All right, and that is it for now. Let's get it soaking. And once it cleans up a bit, we'll take out the needle and the pilot jet and soak it again. cleaning up pretty well. So I'll let it soak for a bit longer and then I'm gonna drain this ultrasonic out. We'll pull the carb back out, go through everything in detail and put it through one more time. Considering this was just the pre-wash, it came out really good. Now, the only thing it didn't really fix was that throttle plate. It was still stuck once I removed it from the ultrasonic. So I worked it manually 
and got it to break free, but it wasn't moving very well. So I soaked the throttle shaft in PB Blaster and just let it sit overnight. And now it's free. So let's get the jets out. We'll run it through the ultrasonic one more time and reassemble and put it back on the machine. The needle's really tight. I'm going to try turning it in just to see where we're at, but I don't think that's going to work. It's too tight. So we'll just take it out. We'll set it back in at two turns out and adjust it as needed. And this is the pilot jet. And in the center here is the main jet. And I think it's one piece with the emulsion tube. So let's try to get that out. And that is not budging. I'm gonna try hitting it lightly, I think with the impact, see if I can't break that free. Yeah, it's not coming out. So I don't wanna break it. I can at least clean the jet, but you know, I don't know for sure if the emulsion tube is going to be good, but if I keep pushing it, I might cause a problem where there isn't. So we'll leave that alone. We'll just clean the jets the best we can and try it out. I'm going to try something I usually don't do, which is hitting this with a bit of heat. Uh, this seal here, it is not coming off. And if I heat it up too much, I'm going to damage that as well as this right here. So I'm not going to go crazy, but let's try applying a bit of heat and see if anything good happens. Nope. A little more heat. <laughs> yeah, I think that's enough. It's turning.
I'm glad I got that out. It does look like some of the holes here are clogged. So it would not have run right. Main jet, it's not clogged. And neither is that pilot jet. So it may have run, granted not well based on this, but we'll clean this up, run through all the holes, make sure they're not plugged, give it one more bath and try it out. All right, let's start by just getting this needle back in place. Drive it in all the way, but don't force it in because you could bend that tip. Half one. Half two. Just gonna put a little PB blaster in there. It's going in pretty tight, just like the way it came out. Yeah, it's a lot better. Just gonna test the function of the needle and seat. Like this, you should not hear anything when you blow through this. If you do, it's gonna leak. It's hard to tell. It, if it is leaking, it's only a tiny bit. Let's uh, try the Mighty Vac on it, see what that says. I'm going to pump it up to 5 PSI. You can see it's leaking right down. So that needle, it's not going to work. Let me see if I have any others. Well, I've got this one. It's a very similar carburetor. It actually might fit on this engine, uh, but this is the Nikki version. And I doubt the needle's compatible, but let's 
take a look. Maybe. Yeah, they look the same as far as the length goes. <laughs> but there is a small difference. That is too small. Unfortunately, this is the only needle I have that's compatible with this carburetor. So I'm going to run with it for now. It does need to be replaced, but I want to get the engine running longer, test out the drive system, make sure I don't need to order anything else. And once I'm sure, I will place an order for a new needle, but I do need to add a fuel shutoff into the system. It doesn't have one right now, and the fuel line that's on there is pretty petrified. So I'm going to swap all the fuel line out, put a new fuel filter, and a fuel shutoff, and that should be good enough to test with. And that's it for now. I'm not going to go crazy putting this thing back together since I know it has to come off again for the new needle. You know, the throttle linkage is connected. That's the important thing. The choke is not, so I can operate that manually to get it started. As far as the fuel line goes, I've already made up a replacement piece that'll go in there like that. But to get the old one off, it's a little bit tricky because the fuel outlet is on the center bottom of that tank and it's just a rubber bushing holding everything in so I can't really pull on it too hard or I'm going to rip it out of the tank but I think uninstalling this is pretty easy it looks like there's just two zip ties here holding that tank in place so I'll cut those zip ties get the tank out get the old line off and put that new piece in its place
Gonna add just a bit of fuel to the tank with the fuel valve shut off. I wanna make sure the bushing on the bottom of that tank is still good. It looks like there is a small leak. So let's try it real quick and then we'll drain the tank out. Got the seat switch. Well, I'd say that was a pretty good test. The carburetor, it's running the engine very well, both at low speed and high. And as far as the needle goes, I've actually had this shut off for a few minutes, fuel valves turned on, and there's nothing dripping. You know, the throat of the carb is a little wet, but the needle is doing a halfway decent job. Anyway, I'm gonna order a new one anyway, just to be safe. I'm gonna get a new air filter and I think the more pressing issue is the fuel tank bushing. It is leaking quite a bit. There's actually a decent puddle under there at this point. So I do have bushings for generator fuel tanks. They are pretty universal. So I'm hoping that'll fit this tank. So let's drain the tank, get it uninstalled and see what we can do. All right, let's see if this will come out. This bushing, it's petrified like the fuel line. So, you know, I'm, I'm not sure just pulling this out is really a good idea. So I'm gonna chip away at it. 
uh, carefully and hopefully get this out without causing any damage to this 27 year old tank. Hmm, I don't think it's budged. So, do I apply extreme force? Probably not a good idea. And I can't really cut down any further because if I start scratching and damaging the valve, not the valve, the metal fitting, then it's not going to make a seal. <laughs> Got it. I launched that one a good 10 feet. But I think I saved it. Yep. I think we're good. Yeah, it seems like it's going to fit. This, these bushings are made by HIPAA, generator, lawnmower, and I think it says 33.6. I assume that means 60 fourths. Not sure, but I'll put a link to it in the description. They seem to fit just about everything. That was too easy. That should do. It's nice and snug. I can't spin it. The old one I could just spin. And usually when they spin like that, you know they're petrified and not fitting very well. So I think this one will be fine. I'm going to throw it back in the machine, put some fuel in, and make sure we don't have any leaks.
it's been a few minutes and things are looking pretty dry. So I think the tank issue is sorted out. It was a bit more work than I expected, but that I'd say we can cross off the list. I did place an order for a new needle and an air filter. And yesterday I actually ordered up the proper size battery and a valve stem. Uh, the valve stem showed up today. So let's get that tire off the bead. We'll swap out the valve stem. And at that point, I think all the tires should be good. Yeah, it might be wishful thinking. Nice. The rim is pretty clean on the back side, so I don't think rust had anything to do with it. Most likely just dry rot. Just taking out the new valve stem so I can force air in faster to help the tire seat.
That was too easy. I think that did it. Probably should have done this a few days ago when I ordered the parts, but I do want to get that mower deck off, take a look at the blade, make sure it's in good condition and sharpen it up. So this one, it looks pretty easy to uninstall. There's just two pins in the back, one on each side, and there's one kind of in the front center there. So we'll get those pins out, get that belt off, and the deck should slide right out. This blade is absolutely massive, and surprisingly, the ball bearing is absolutely silent. I would have thought after sitting for 20 years that that would be an issue, but I don't think that's the case. Uh, the blade, though, that does have some issues. Uh, let me show you. First thing I noticed with the blade is that it was below the bottom of the deck, so that makes it a little more dangerous to use. You know, in this case, it's about a quarter inch below. And if I rotate it around, it's about twice that at half an inch. So the blade is bent. Potentially, it's the wrong blade altogether. I'm not sure. So I'm going to order up a new blade. Let's try to get this one off. We'll clean the deck up and just set this aside until the new blade shows up.
This plastic part, it is discontinued and it's needed to hold the battery down. So I'm just gonna cut a piece of flat bar to size, add a couple holes and we should be good. Let me catch you up real quick. It's been two weeks and most of the parts came in within days. I've got the blade, the battery, and the air filter, but the needle, that was a hassle. I ordered an OEM needle and it got lost in the mail. So after about a week, I placed an order for this Stens part and that came in a few days. So I'm gonna pause it here real quick. I'll pop the carburetor back off. We'll swap out the needle and finish this thing up. It's a lot of junk in there considering it's a new fuel line, new fuel filter, and a clean tank. That's surprising. All right, let's try this test again. I'm a little pessimistic that this new needle is gonna work any better because 
Despite the old needle failing the test, it did a decent job on that riding mower. And this carburetor is designed for a gravity-fed system, and that's not going to supply more than one PSI. And I'm pumping this up to about 10, and that I know this carburetor can't do, but I want to see that it stabilizes somewhere, usually around 4 or 5 PSI, sometimes better. Let's see if this new needle does any better than that. So it is leaking off, but it is doing much better than the one I pulled out of there. Let's see if it stabilizes. It's still dropping right at 4 PSI. Let's give it another second. Now we're at 3. And we're still at three. So it stabilized at three PSI. You know, would I like it to be higher? Yes. But three PSI, that should be fine. You can tell where the clean spot is, so I'm going to set it back to where it was, test out the choke, and can fine-tune it if necessary. I think that's it. I suppose one good thing about it taking so long for that needle to come in is that the mower sat for about two weeks and during that time the tire stayed inflated so I think it's safe to say that those are fixed the bad news is it's been two weeks since I cut my lawn I was expecting to run this out in the yard last weekend that never happened, and this weekend, there's rain in the forecast the entire time, so it might be three weeks before I get this outside. Just putting a little bit of fluid film 
to protect the metal. It probably needs to be painted at some point, but I'm not too concerned about it, especially right now. I really just want to get it together, get it outside, put it through its paces and make sure there's nothing else wrong with this machine. This is just a piece of self-adhesive foam. Yeah, it made me nervous using a metal bar to hold the battery down. So the foam's gonna help things stay in place. It's also gonna provide some insulation in case this shifts a little bit and touches that post. Yeah, I might need a washer there. Yeah, that, that fits a lot better. The other blade, it was extended out quite a bit. This one actually sits inside the deck. Uh, the other thing worth noting too is this hole is much smaller. You know, it's just wide enough for the bolt. And on the old blade, that hole was quite a bit larger. And that bolt, it had a small washer, just barely larger than the hole, holding the blade and the blade adapter in place. So this blade, besides being bent and too low, it was barely secured on that spindle.
hopefully you guys can see that okay. I loosened up these studs so the belt installation should be much easier. So I'm gonna get the belt on first and then we'll secure the deck. We're getting pretty close. Only have the shroud around the engine as well as the seat. Uh, but first, I do want to change that oil. Probably should have done this before putting the deck back on the drain. It's right there. It's going to be close, so I may, might make a mess here. <laughs> and we get nothing. That drain is clogged. Or it's not a drain. I think it is a drain, but there seems to be some sort of a check valve there and a screw under there. So maybe if I loosen that screw, we'll get some oil. Not sure. Yeah, that's it. Just got to turn the screw. Uh, this pan's not going to cut it, though. I got to find something better. Might be a little small. Actually, it's definitely too small. This has to be the slowest oil change ever. So don't be in a rush with this one.
looks like we're full. This mower did a great job and I was concerned because my lawn was way overdue and most mowers would have had an issue cutting it down, but this one plowed through it without any issue. So, you know, at this point I'd say we're at 100%. You know, everything on this machine is working the way that it should. I guess the one thing I noticed though is that when I disengaged the blade, it was spinning for quite a while before coming to a stop. And that, I think, is a function of the design. There is no break on that spindle. And as we saw earlier, the ball bearing is in excellent condition. So it's going to take a while to stop spinning. And that's something you don't see on newer mowers. But, you know, all things considered, this is a 27-year-old machine. And it's running very well. So... 
I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching.